Before you listen, if you enjoy the stories and want to hear more, then please consider subscribing. Most of you listening aren't subscribed, so please take this time to subscribe. Turn on notifications so you'll never miss a story and be the first to hear. You'll also be supporting me. Thank you. Working as a pizza delivery guy to earn some extra cash in college definitely gave me my fair share of weird encounters. But none compared to the night I delivered to the customer from hell who pulled a shotgun on me. Easily one of the scariest moments of my life. It was a typical busy Friday night shift at Papa John's. I was hustling to handle a constant flow of delivery orders between the campus area and downtown. Just trying to provide fast service and earn some solid tips. Never could I have imagined what I was about to walk into at my next stop. The ticket came in for a pepperoni pizza heading to an address uptown. A pretty routine order and delivery location, so I didn't think much of it as I headed out with a hot pizza box in hand. I pulled up to a rundown apartment building I'd been to a few times before. Balancing the pizza box, I walked up and rang the bell for Unit 218, where the customer lived. After a few minutes with no answer, I leaned in closer to the door and rang the bell again wondering if maybe the customer had stepped out or couldn't hear me. I pressed my ear against the door and knocked loudly in case they were in the shower or something. Still no sounds of movement inside. I was just about to pull out my cell phone to call the customer when suddenly I heard the sound of multiple locks being turned and chains unlatching on the other side of the door. It slowly creaked open and I took a small step back, caught a little off guard. As the door opened fully, I found myself face to face with a customer standing there in the doorway. A disheveled middle-aged man with a beer belly, greasy hair, and yellowed pit stains showing through his grubby white tank top. But what made me do a double take was the fact that all he had below the waist was a pair of stained tidy whities underwear. I averted my eyes downwards quickly, feeling uncomfortable and hoping no neighbors were peeking through their peefoles. The lack of pants was an awkward and unsanitary surprise, to say the least gross. Behind him, I spotted the barrel of a shotgun just leaning against the TE stand. My adrenaline immediately spiked while I tried to stay composed on the surface. The man grunted for me to hand over the pizza while he dug in his underwear for cash. Keeping one eye on the firearm behind him, I eked out a polite thank you when he finally paid and took the food. I just wanted to get out of there ASAP. But as I was turning a hustle back to my scooter, it hit me. I'd forgotten to bring the two liter soda he had also ordered. Crap, so close to being free of this really bad vibe. Reluctantly, I spun back around to let the customer know about the missing drink piece of his order. Big mistake. He immediately flew into a rage over my mistake. Brandishing the shotgun suddenly in his hands, the man started screaming expletives at me go get his freaking soda. I froze in terror watching his trigger finger dangerously close to pulling as the barrel waved erratically in my direction. Somehow my survival instinct kicked in, and I snapped out of my paralyzed state. The guy was clearly deranged and I needed to escape while I still could. Ignoring the continued stream of threats shouted my way, I sprinted back to my scooter, hopped on, and tore off down the street like my life depended on it, which it clearly had in that moment. My hands shook as I fumbled to fasten my helmet, my mind swirling over what had just happened. As the initial panic subsided, it sunk in just how narrowly I had avoided becoming a headline. I headed straight back to Papa John's and told the on-duty manager what went down. To my relief, he immediately called the police to report the shotgun-wielding psycho so no other delivery guy would get sent into that death trap. The cops took my statement and reached out to follow up over the next few days as the investigation proceeded. Turns out the customer had a history of violence. Beyond firing him as a customer, Papa John's banned him from all locations just to be safe. But the damage was done. I was completely rattled after coming so close to being shot or taken hostage in that derelict apartment. The manager offered to give me some time off, which I gladly accepted. Needed a break to process it all. Despite the nightmarish encounter, I eventually regained enough composure to return to delivering pizzas. But I was way more apprehensive now taking minimum precautions like never going inside buildings and requiring customers to come to me curbside. Unfortunately, that one traumatic incident stained my passion for the job. The anxiety whenever I had a delivery in a sketchy location lingered. I ended up quitting not long after, the stress no longer worth the tips. 
In hindsight, I'm grateful I escaped when I did and that the psycho customer was reported before hurting anyone. But it shook me up big time. I learned the hard way that delivery driving can put you in some very vulnerable positions. Now, whenever I order food delivery, I always make sure to tip extremely generously. Knowing firsthand the risks drivers take, I have so much respect. It takes a bold type of person to do that job, especially late nights dealing with potentially intoxicated or violent customers. Beyond gaining perspective, I guess the upside from my terrifying pizza delivery incident is that it toughened me up. Showed me how critical it is to listen to your instincts if you feel unsafe. Don't wait. Get out of there immediately. In a messed up way, almost getting shot taught me to have zero tolerance for red flags and to advocate for myself rather than feeling pressure to please strangers, no matter how bizarre their behavior. Heart lessons at a young age, but they serve me well in the long run. Sometimes it takes a dangerous, life-threatening situation to really shake you awake and change your outlook. Working the dreaded late night pizza delivery shift is always a gamble. You'd never know what kind of sketchy situations you might end up in while bringing food to random strangers after dark. But nothing prepared me for the terror I felt the night I was sent to deliver to a decrepit, abandoned house and got chased by vicious dogs before I could even get to the door. It was like something straight out of a horror movie, and definitely one of the scariest nights ever on that job. It started out like any other boring wheat night closing shift. It was a cold, drizzly November night and the shop had been dead for hours. Around midnight, the phone suddenly rang with an order for a small pepperoni pizza to be delivered across town. The address was in a semi-industrial area full of warehouses and empty lots that I knew got pretty desolate late at night when businesses were closed. I didn't recognize the cross streets provided either, but delivery was a delivery so I dutifully wrote down the info and set off to make it, hoping for a decent tip. Following the GPS through a maze of dimly lit back streets, I started feeling uneasy as it led me further into a sketchy, unfamiliar neighborhood. The roads were getting darker and more isolated. I tightened my grip on the steering wheel, willing the navigation to take me into a better lit area again. As I followed the GPS deeper into the unfamiliar neighborhood, I started to feel increasingly uneasy. The area was very run down, with crumbling warehouses and overgrown lots. The few streetlights did little to pierce the drizzly darkness. Turning down an even darker back street, I squinted to make out the addresses, trying to spot the one I was looking for. The buildings here looked completely abandoned, many with broken windows and graffiti. I gripped the steering wheel tighter, willing the navigation to take me back to a more populated area. Finally, near the end of the desolate street, I pulled up slowly in front of what looked like an extremely decrepit old house wedged between two decaying warehouses. My internal alarm bell started blaring immediately. The house seemed to be completely abandoned. The wood siding was warped and rotting in places, with peeling lead paint revealing the weathered gray boards underneath. Shingles were missing from the roof, and a sagging porch beam looked on the verge of collapse. I wanted to get this over with quickly. As I got close to the stoop, my heart dropped as I heard the unmistakable sounds of angry barking rapidly approaching from the back of the creepy property. Before I could even process what was happening, two huge Rottweilers came barreling around the side of the house, eyes wild and teeth fully bared. The vicious dogs were making a beeline straight for me, closing in fast. I felt my blood run cold. Stumbling backwards, I dropped the pizza box and started sprinting toward my idling car, fumbling nervously for my keys. I heard the heavy paws gaining ground behind me, the sounds of the snarling and gnashing teeth right on my heels spurring me to run faster. I didn't dare look back. It felt like a scene from a movie where I was about to be ripped apart. By some miracle, I made it to the car and dove inside just in time, peeling off down the street in a panic. The angry dogs chased behind long enough to terrify me before the darkness enveloped them. I could barely breathe or think straight after the nightmarish close call. Still shaking all over from the adrenaline rush, I drove straight back to the pizza shop and told the manager what happened. He was shocked, saying I should never have been sent alone at night to such a clearly abandoned, dangerous location. We called the number that had placed the order, but it just rang without answer. Something very fishy was going on and we immediately contacted police to report the incident in case someone had intentionally set a trap. They documented all the details and said to call right away if we had any other strange encounters related to deliveries at empty buildings after hours. 
In the aftermath of my traumatic experience, the late shift delivery protocols were updated to prevent any other unassuming drivers from finding themselves in peril. We no longer accepted orders to deserted looking buildings or remote areas at night when things seemed extra sketchy. Safety had to come first, not pleasing some random customer. For me personally, it took a very long time to stop feeling panicked any time I had to get out of the car to make a delivery after that night. Loud dogs barking would immediately spike my adrenaline and I'd break out in a cold, nervous sweat, thinking of those snarling Rottweilers lunging at me. In hindsight, I clearly should have trusted the bad vibes I initially felt about that abandoned, creepy house rather than rationalizing it away. Risking your safety to complete a questionable late-night food drop isn't worth it. I learned to always listen to those gut feelings instead of ignoring them. Ever since my close call that night, I'm much more attuned to potential dangers whenever I'm out doing deliveries. Things most people would never notice now leap out. The busted streetlight on an otherwise dark block, the twitching curtains in the house I'm approaching, the gnawing unease as I get deeper into an unfamiliar neighborhood. It's like a switch flipped in my brain, heightened awareness becoming my new normal. I no longer force myself to push past those instincts just to complete the jaw. If something feels off, I speak up or turn around. No questions asked. Working the late night delivery shift for Pizza Palace, I had my fair share of sketchy close calls dropping off pies in bad parts of town. But nothing compares to the sheer terror I felt that fateful Thursday when a group of men tried to force their way into my car at a stoplight. I floored it and narrowly escaped, but it was the closest I'd ever come to being seriously harmed on the job. It started out as a painfully slow night, typical for a Thursday shift. By 10 p.m., the phones had gone dead, and I was mainly just handling the occasional nearby apartment or office order that I could quickly knock out. My mind was wandering to closing time and the beer waiting for me at home. But right before we were set to lock up for the night, the phone suddenly rang again. My coworker took the call, then gave me a wary glance as he jotted down the details. Last delivery for you going all the way to Orchard Heights. I felt my heart sink into my stomach when I heard the neighborhood name. Orchard Heights was a notoriously rough housing project clear across the city that was rife with drugs and violent crime. We all dreaded deliveries over there, especially at night when it got more dangerous, but refusing any customer was grounds for firing. Reluctantly, I grabbed the hot pies and headed out, now hyper aware of the fact I was driving alone into uncharted risky territory. I locked the doors instinctively once I got outside the familiar neighborhood surrounding Pizza Palace. As I drove across town, the well-lit main boulevards gave way to darker side streets with broken street lamps. Convenience stores and restaurants turned into crumbling row houses lined with bars on the windows. I knew I was entering gang turf. My hands tightened on the wheel. Checking the directions, I made a couple turns to wind deeper into the projects. I stuck out sorely cruising in my topper's pizza t-shirt to this area I didn't belong in. Few other cars were even out. I just wanted to locate the address quickly and get out ASAP. Finally, I pulled onto the right street, a narrow alleyway full of potholes bracketed by rundown apartments. It looked completely deserted at this late hour. Squinting at the building numbers, I spotted the one that matched and pulled up along the curb. And that's when the nightmare truly began. Out of the darkness, a group of six or seven men who looked to be gang members suddenly appeared from both directions, rapidly approaching my parked car. One banged aggressively at my window and aggressively tried to yank open the locked door, yelling at me to get out now, fool. I froze in primal panic, watching as more of them came to surround the car, eyes filled with menace. The biggest guy pulled hard on the back door handle, cursing when he found it secured. I knew then that I was in deep, deep trouble. This was a coordinated pack mentality. Fumbling, I shifted into drive while trying to keep my cool and not betray the paralyzing fear I felt inside. Don't let them see you're scared, I told myself. Be ready to move instantly. I turned the pizza heat bag over to obscure my telltale work shirt. After what felt like an eternity, the light turned green. Just as a ringleader at my window glanced away momentarily to yell at the others, I hit the gas hard, peeling out through the intersection. My heart raced as I stood off into the night, watching them run after the car in my rearview mirror until I was safely out of reach. 
I drove for a good three miles before pulling into a gas station parking lot to try calming my rattled nerves, still looking around for any signs of a tail. Never before had I felt so intensely in danger of bodily harm on this job. My hands didn't stop shaking for almost an hour. By the time I got back to Pizza Palace, I was still visibly shook up from the encounter. I told my manager what went down, hoping he would be sympathetic about the traumatic event. But true to corporate form, he seemed more annoyed that we had lost the sale and didn't offer much comfort. Quitting on the spot briefly crossed my mind, but I knew I desperately needed this job, tasty deliveries and all, as a broke college student. Beggars can't be choosers, I figured, but I quickly vowed to never again agree to bring pizzas anywhere near Orchard Heights or other projects areas after dark. It just wasn't worth risking my safety for $10 an hour and some cheapskate tip. For weeks afterwards, I still felt jumpy and hypervigilant whenever I got in my car for work. Stopping at lonely intersections or red lights put me on edge. I found myself constantly scanning for any shadowy figures on the sidewalk, ready to hit the gas at the first sign of trouble. The hyper-awareness became an involuntary habit hard to shake. That attempted carjacking was eye-opening of the dangers lurking within this job I had always seen as easy money. I realized no pizza delivery gate was worth jeopardizing my life over, but it unfortunately took almost becoming a crime statistic myself to fully wake up to that grim reality. In the end, that night did impart some street smarts and caution that have served me well since. I learned to listen to my sixth sense in any sketchy delivery situation, and to firmly stand my ground refusing an order outright if my gut says it's just too hazardous or isolated, no matter what my manager threatens. Personal safety has to come first. Narrowly escaping a pack of determined thugs also gave me the courage to better advocate for myself in other situations moving forward. And to this day, I never again let anyone pressure me into an area that raises internal red flags. That singularly terrifying night taught me to follow my instincts above all else. Still constantly watching my back though, pepper and a pie in hand. Thanks for listening in. If you like these stories and want to hear more, then please subscribe and like and support this new channel. We have more stories for you to listen to.